Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at uh, some basic small floor plans. Uh, these are all, you know, 1,200 to 2,000 square foot single family, single level houses. And we're going to be looking at these floor plans. Um, I want to point out a couple common mistakes that I see a lot on spec homes, uh, you know, tract homes. Maybe it's even a custom builder. Um, but here are some common pitfalls. Obviously, we won't go over all of them, but a few things that I think could be improved on these layouts. Um, so this is our first plan right here. You'll notice it's 1,344 square foot. So pretty small single family house, like a starter family home. Uh, and there's a few things that stand out to me right away. Um, number one is you'll notice that when you walk in the front door, your eyes are going to go right here to the kitchen sink, um, which I don't love. It's not ideal. Sometimes can be unavoidable if you have a real small plan like this. Um, but if it can be avoided, we would want to do something about that. Um, another thing I notice: there are no closets in here. Where's your vacuum? Where's your mop? Your uh, uh, people don't mop these days, do they? Uh, where Where are your brooms? Where's your storage? Um, we don't have a pantry anywhere here in the kitchen. Um, the only place I can think of is here in the laundry room, which is already just really small. And you know, maybe you could store them up here against the wall, but you're really just tight on your space there. So no coat closet, nothing like that. Um, I do notice they have a linen closet. I would probably, you know, wall that off there and open open that linen closet, you know, close that wall and open that linen closet here. And then you have, at the very least, a, a small closet for general use. Um, bedrooms are about the right size for a house this size. Um, Another thing I want to point out is you got to think about where your furniture is going to be placed. So assuming this is your front door, really, uh, TV has to kind of go here, uh, which means your couches are probably going to go somewhere like this and like this. And on these small homes, you really got to be conscious of using every square foot. Uh, and so what is all this space being used for? Um, there's really not a lot you can do there because if you, you know, put another couch here, you can be blocking that door to the hallway. Um, so that's really not an ideal situation. I'm assuming the designer intended for the dining table to go here, but that's really an awkward fit. Like there's just not a lot of space in here for a dining table, um, especially buttered right up against this fridge. I just, you know, maybe a round table, but it's going to be a really tight fit and you know it's a small home you don't have to have a huge dining room but you know that could definitely be improved um looking here at the master suite um this is a very small master bathroom very confined um with the square footage maybe that's not a huge deal breaker but these days uh, you know that's that's real small that's real tight um just a single vanity, you know, even for a house this size, that's that's uh, not going to be super comfortable. Um, and then these closets, I would definitely take off that wall. Uh, better use for that would maybe adding some extra windows here um, to let in some extra light. Uh, generally, if possible, you want to have at least two windows in each room so that your shadows aren't all going the same direction. Um, and I would probably move those closets to this wall. And the other thing that does is allow for some sound dampening. Um, those, all those clothes in there are really good. You know, you got two walls uh, and, and all the clothes inside there, they're very good at dampening the sound. Um, I would probably also do something about this door here being just, you know, open, exposed. You know, you think about, you leave your master bedroom door ajar a little bit and somebody standing you know here in your living room is able to see right on in there so um, that's something i would address again real small laundry uh washer dryer room 
This is a little unusual having the garage door swing out. Usually you'd swing that in, um, but I think here they did that just because they don't have the space. Um, what else? I think that, that about covers this one. So, I, you know, I, I see this a lot, even on uh, bigger development projects, these design issues not, not being addressed. And it's not an issue of cost because really these changes, you know, they don't cost you anything to make. We're not adding square footage. We're not doing anything real fancy with the house. We're just, you know, adjusting the layout so it works a little better. Try to avoid things like uh, first thing you see when you walk in being a, a fridge and a, a kitchen sink. So also these are pretty terrible if you've ever used them. Those eat on bars, it's much better to just go flat across and do normal sized chairs rather than having those tall bar stools. Um, trying to think anything else, not really, just that there's not, there's not a lot of light anywhere in this house. This is going to be a dark house. You know, I, I can't tell if they got a window here or not, but it, it needs one window. Bathroom should have windows. Uh, and I would definitely switch, you know, this kitchen sink and give it a nice big window on that side. I mean, there's plenty of cabinetry in here, probably more than you'd need in a house this size. So those are some changes that I'd make. Um, our next one here, we got an 1800 square foot plan. Oh, I did want to go back just one sec. That's too small for a garage. 19 by 19.4, not going to happen. Uh, you, you put two vehicles in there, good luck uh, moving around, good luck getting out. That's not a lot of space. If you got, you know, a lot of people in our area drive big trucks, not not going to happen. And if, if you do manage to fit the two cars in there, you're not going to get any storage anywhere. So um, hopping back over to this 1800. Uh, one thing I noticed, you got this big long trench up to the front door. Not, you know, not the worst thing in the world, but definitely avoidable. Um, big thing I noticed right, right away with this layout is you, you got to think about who, the, who this house is for. Um, I'm assuming this is a small family, uh, which is, is typically the case for these three bedroom homes, you know, three bedroom, two bath homes. Uh, if, if that is the case, I hate, hate, hate having these two uh, bedrooms here. It's weird, these plans, they, they didn't even label the rooms. Um, but you know, maybe one's being used as an office and then it's not terrible to locate that towards the front of the home. Uh, but you know, if, if, if this is for a family, which, you know, if you're building these types of houses, usually small families, that's not going to cut it. Um, think about it. You got, you know, if you got young kids, are they going to be constantly running through the house this way, making a mess all over the place? You know, their rooms kind of spill out into the hallways. It's going to create some issues in here. Um, if you got teenagers, you know, uh, this it depends on your family. Maybe you trust your kids, but a uh, real nice, easy path to that front door there. Um, what else? Just just not ideal. You know, when you when you let in a casual guest and they're, you know, standing in your doorway talking to you, just, you know, being able to see right down this hallway, towards the kids room just it's not it's not great and i see this on a lot of homes um the other thing is this is just the weirdest thing in the world you got you know two doors here and here they're like five feet apart you don't need two doors here that's completely unnecessary uh like i i get they're trying to use it you know if you got guests in here so they have easy access and also you know the kids but really you want a powder room, and if you can't have a powder room, then you know at least don't have two doors into the same bathroom. Um, and that also creates just this big awkward space that is useless. Um, you know, meanwhile your door is butting up against your toilet, so you can't open it more than ninety degrees. So uh, that's a real kind of weird fireplace. What else? Um, 
this one's better on the master privacy. Uh, at least when you are standing here in the house, you're not getting like a direct line of sight. Unless maybe, you know, you leave your door all the way open and then I guess you get this long view into the bathroom. But for the most part, I think that's pretty well concealed. I would probably run a uh, just a little divider wall with an opening. So something like this, you know, close it off just a little more so you don't have to worry about that. Um, I don't love all of these 45s in this house. You know, 45 degree angles, they're just kind of weird. They play off the light weird. I'm not a big fan, especially this 45 degree kitchen. I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, I don't know who would ever want one of those. That seems remarkably inconvenient. Uh, you also have like no counter space between your sink and your stove. And then you've got all this counter space here. Uh, generally, we try to keep some pretty equal spacing uh, between the kitchen sink, the fridge, and the stove. So I would probably relocate that sink here, square that off, uh, and then you got, you know, decent counter space here, decent counter space here, decent counter space there. Something like that. Uh, the other thing, I don't know why this island's just drawn as a square, but, uh, you know, yeah, you could probably fit a decent sized island in there. Always keep in mind you want to have about 42 inches uh, in between your countertops, even in these smaller homes, you really just got to have that spacing. Otherwise, it gets really congested in there, uh, especially when you got like your fridge doors swinging into it. Um, this door should be swinging the other way. Otherwise, like you're supposed to come in here with your laundry and we're, you're supposed to open the door and, and come into the room and then close the door to get to the washer. I mean, that just that's just kind of crazy. And maybe that's just, you know, lazy drafting. They need to turn the door the other way around. Um, this laundry room's all right. It's decent size for the size of the house. Yeah, I, I do kind of like having that desk area there, or, you, or it could be a bar. We got our storage in this one, so that's better. Um, and you could probably put some pantry items in here. Overall, this one is a is a much better house. Um, we got our walk-in closet here. This needs a bigger window, maybe not that big, but bigger window. Um, Privacy is an issue, but you can always you know just do a a higher up window that's above uh, above you know the eye line, so you're not having to worry about that, especially if your house is lifted up on the lot. Um, or you could do frosted glass, or it can be, you know, curtained. There's a number of privacy options, but you, you do want to have at least some natural light coming into your into your bathroom here. Um, overall, this one's a lot better. The biggest thing I hate is this bathroom. It is a dungeon bathroom, no lights, and I also hate this. But if, if it's a custom home and that works for you and your family, uh, you know, great, but generally I try to avoid that situation. Um, coming over here to this other plan, we got another one hovering around 1850 square foot. Um, garage seems decent size. This is weird. I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't know what any of this is that's a weird situation because your wash your your laundry room's tiny uh so you got this tiny little laundry room and and again like this door really needs to be swinging inward not outward um yeah just i, I what would you use that for that's such a weird space and then having this like you know i, I don't think anybody living in a house this size has a butler where you'd, you'd want a closet like right there on the front door. That just seems a little crazy to me. Presumably you'd want to use that for like, you know, your coat, your kids' coats. Um, not so much a guest like just barely walking into your house. Usually, you know, there's other things that'll suffice for guests. Uh, so that probably would have been better used, you know, somewhere in here because when you leave in the morning, uh, you're going to be going through your garage, not usually not through your front door. Um, so it looks like they got an office space here. 
they got the windows like grayed out. I think they're supposed to be here. But um, location's not terrible. Again, I, I don't love the 45. I don't know why that's there. This powder room, uh, I don't know how I feel about it. It's not horrible. Generally, I try to avoid, you know, being able to see into the into the into the powder room from like the dining area or the living area. And you know, nobody when you go into somebody's uh, guest bathroom, uh, you don't want to be so close that uh, it feels like certain sounds are carrying through the house. So uh, generally, that would be better, you know tucked into a hallway somewhere out of sight. Um, and I don't really see a way of rearranging this plan, but were I designing from scratch, that's definitely a consideration. Uh, let's see, we got bathroom here, closet here, looking good. Those look good. Appropriately sized, you know, 11 by 12. That's pretty good. You know, bathroom's a little small maybe, Double vanities would be nice, um, but you know, with with the size constraints, I understand why they don't have them. Um, this kitchen layout, I think overall is pretty good. Again, I don't know why they have the forty-five. I think that's strange. I don't know anybody who does that anymore. Of course, these plans are probably pretty old. Um, I'm assuming living room is going here with like a couch and a couch. Uh, and dining is here, maybe. Um, you know, consider where furniture is going to be placed because I think this would be kind of a hard home to furnish. Uh, just kind of some awkward spaces um, because you got to have access here, so you can't block that with a couch. And then the other thing is you're going to be walking right between your dining and your and your kitchen to get in here to your master. Um, this one's definitely got some master bedroom privacy issues where, uh, you know, you got windows on this wall, so your bed, well, that's probably a little too small for the bed. So the bed's probably going here and you got to worry about, you know, anybody standing here in your living room. Like it's just a straight shot right onto your bed. So it does not feel very private, does not feel very secluded. Um... And, and of all the places in your house, the bedrooms should be the furthest away from the eyes of, you know, guests or just anybody who's walking around your house. Um, likewise, assuming our bed placement is here uh, with this master bathroom, um, you know, let's say you're laying here in bed. Uh, Lights come on in here because your partner's got to get up and, and use the bathroom and those are going to be shining right on your face. And if they're, uh, you know, doing their business here on the commode and the door happens to maybe be ajar, not that any, not that any reasonable person would do that, right? Um, but you do have a direct line of sight, which is a little strange. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, where were we? Um, that's probably about it. If, if, if you're gonna do this thing where you have the bathroom and the closet linked, you don't really need that, that door there. I, if anything, I would leave that the open one and make this the door, but really this vanity should be moved over against this wall and that door should be here. You know, it's easier access. You're not going through the entire room. Um, and then that avoids, you know, that situation that we were talking about there. Overall, I mean, not horrible. Make sure to have some windows in here to give yourself some natural light. Moving on to the next one, I guess. All right, here we got another, another one. Looks like we're at 1600 square foot. What do we got here? Front entrance, good, it's decent. Got your couch here and your TV. This is a little odd, you know. 
it's, it's kind of hard on these small plans to find a way to separate the different, you know, kitchen, living room, and dining um, in a way that makes sense. This wall is, you know, not ideal, but I suppose that's not, that's not horrible if you want a more enclosed kitchen. Um, it's, you know, it, that kitchen is probably a little big for this house, 1,600 square foot. I mean, maybe if you like to cook, but. That's a lot of cabinetry. That's a lot of space. And, uh, it, well, this, this stove should be in the middle. I don't know why it's off to the side. I don't know who, who would decide to do that, but, um, garage, we're still really narrow on this garage. You know, most of my houses, if we're doing these double doors, you want a 18 foot double door. These are clearly 16. Um, meaning you only got like a foot and a half of room on each side. So when you got your two cars in here, you know, good luck opening your doors. That's going to be a real pain. Water heater is just chilling out here in the garage. Uh, we got some more 45 degree angles going on in the master bathroom. Overall, not a horrible master bathroom. One thing to note on these plans is they all show a tub in the master. Uh, this wouldn't work because where is, where is your shower? You can't have a jacuzzi tub and no shower. So either you go the shower tub combo or you go the walk-in shower, um, but you can't just do one of these unless, I don't know, maybe there's somebody out there that always just bathes, um, but that would be kind of unusual. Here, at least we got a closet, still no pantry, which doesn't make any sense if you're going to have this enormous kitchen not to have a pantry. This whole layout's kind of strange, but not terrible. This, that wouldn't do. Again, like you'd have to open the door like all the way and like have the door open and set your bin here. It's, it's too small to be doing laundry in there. Um, you know, I'd probably find a way to open that up. Overall, this is probably the best of the plans we looked at. So, um, hope some of you guys helped that, uh, found that helpful going over these plans, looking for a few common design mistakes. Uh, I will be doing more videos along these lines in the future. So if you are interested, um, Make sure to subscribe and be on the lookout for future videos. You guys have a great rest of your day.